Hello, hello lovely people. We are here again with my uh, weekly journals and I can't believe it that now it's week number nine. For those of you with, who are new here, my name is Catalina and I'm the person behind the by Katarina Designs. And uh, this week we, I will show you a few things that I managed to finish this week and uh, some goodies that I just um, received and um, we will continue with the round your sweater challenge and this week because I got uh, so many questions about my previous videos okay why uh, you, you didn't show us the sleeve you didn't show us the sleeve yeah because we didn't got that Today I will show you the sleeve and I will explain you how to calculate decreases for the sleeve if you want to have a shaped sleeve and uh, we will also talk about, uh, if you remember from the last week, from those extra stitches that we are adding at the sleeve with the um, uh, short rows at the back, how we will decrease that. Basically it, they will get into the decrease mode. Now, I do have two questions in the Google form uh, for, from the last week. One is for, from my uh, Romanian girl, which um, asked me to put these videos in uh, Romanian. So, unfortunately, I cannot do that because uh, even this is recorded, it's like a live to me, so I'm just speaking nothing. I, I don't have a paper here and following some words, which will be weird for me to just uh, film it twice, to do this video twice, uh, and uh, I don't think it's worth it. That's why I'm using English language because English language in YouTube has auto translations so you can translate using caption, automatic caption and then translate them in any language you will like. So into the next video I will show you how you can do that. Maybe you don't uh, know or you didn't try it, okay? Okay. So, because I still have this uh, kind of uh, comments from um, other language speakers, the thing is that I cannot do this video in Romanian as, well, Romanian as well as well as the same as my tutorials, because with tutorials I'm filming once and then adding the voice. Here I need to freely speak about it, so I cannot do it. It will be kind of weird for me to just uh, film it, filming twice because it's nothing edited with this, it's nothing, I'm just staying in front of the camera and speak. So this will be weird for me to make it, can make it in a different language. And why I chose um, uh, English, uh, because you can use for the English the automatic translation okay so you just click on the cc here and then if you go to settings you can go and auto translate and then if you want i don't know how to make it okay so in subtitles auto translate and then if you want you can go to romanian for example and you'll have a subtitle in the language that you want okay So, I don't know if you heard anything what I was talking about. So again, you click the CC button and then go on the settings button and you can have auto translating and you can choose from any language you would like to just have the subtitle here. So now any other language can uh, read what I'm saying. And another thing which is important to be in English is this auto translation is not available for other languages. For example, Romanian, if I want to do the tutorial in Romanian, then auto translation is not available for Romanian language. So that is why it's in English. So I hope this was helpful, okay? 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay, next question was if uh, for my ribbon sweater, which is now called uh, Sella Jumper, Sella means uh, saddle in uh, Italian, and I thought that because of the saddle shape of the sweater, I told you that I was inspired about uh, the knitting ones. I thought that it, a Sella Jumper will be a nice neck. So for Sella Jumper, the uh, tester is ongoing already so unfortunately uh, you ask me uh, if uh, I do have a spot uh, it's kind of the girls from the testing already some of them already finished the sweater even if the uh, design is when 24 of November so it's a bit weird because there already were discussion about uh, the sweater so uh, for now no but into four other sweaters or maybe other um other designs that i will that i will make a call for you can apply for that one and now let's uh talk about what i managed to finish this week uh i managed to finish this knitted sweater and i don't know every time i'm uh, finishing a knitting sweater i feel so 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 proud it makes me feel so good because with crochet it's like okay it's something that i'm doing more often and with knitting when i'm able to finish something because i love to knit it's like my uh, uh knitting is for me like a break so i'm just when i'm crocheting too much or something uh it helps me with, even with the hands because it's a different move so it doesn't uh, my hands get uh, uh, a bit of rest while i'm knitting but i do have a lot of knitting projects and i'm able to finish <laughs> very few of them so this is one of them and i'm really proud i used the same pattern because this summer i was um i made a knitting version of the sick breeze cover up and i have the same pattern that i used to just recreate the pattern from the crocheted version so i use the same pattern and i'm pretty happy with it i even shaped the neckline and i have this i don't know it's, it's kind of i'm really proud of it and it doesn't use um even if it's a drop shoulder sweater uh, i didn't use any uh, needle except of uh, waving in the ends and this is because i worked circular up to the armpit and then working front panel well up to here and then the shoulders and then the back panel and here i just use the crochet hook to join uh, to make this join i was thinking that it's a it will be a good thing because everything is ending in pearls row here so i just finished the rounds without the pearl row and then i added this and it's kind of continuing the the stitch pattern so i kind of love it so i'm super excited i have to buy the pattern and uh and for this one i used let me um only that you will see it so I use Wool Addict um, Glory, this is the yarn, and this, um, uh, where is the, okay, fiber, so it's Merino Extra Fine, 100%, and uh, the recommended needle, and I think it's in a bulky weight, the recommended needles are 7, 8, millimeters and i use eight for this one okay another thing that i finished is i finally finished this gorgeous sweater didi, didi, didi. yeah i will make a tester call for this one for the knitted one i won't because it's kind of uh, easy shape and uh, um I don't think I will need testers, but for this one, I will make a tester call. This, uh, it will be called Lava Pullover. And it's funny how I get to this name. 
uh, while I was working uh, on it in the evening, I was just asking uh, my husband who was just uh, sitting next to me, okay, which is the first word that came into your head when you're seeing this sweater? And he said lava. And I said, hmm, yeah. And uh, he was like, you know, all those grays, black and uh, orange and red uh, reminds me of lava. And then I was, uh, because this is how I usually do after having a word in my head to use for the name. Then I'm uh, actually making some research to see if I'm founding uh, some other um, version like with Sela. It was subtle, but then I was looking in translations and see how I can get something much more nicer or not that straightforward to be a bit of uh, hearted. So I was thinking about volcano, <laughs> but then I said, okay, lava will be fine. And uh, yeah, I think it's working. Only if you were using other, <laughs> other uh, colors, it won't be uh, as lava as this one. But yeah, I think it will be nice. Um, yeah, so this was it this uh, week actually yesterday i got some yarn i think this is uh, the new pack the new color pack from uh, thrones crochet it's the wonder acrylic yarn uh i know that everybody is not into synthetic fibers uh, as mm, I don't know if it's uh, plastic, you know, yeah, we need organic and everything. But I don't put aside acrylic because acrylic is uh, one of the most affordable fibers and you can find them in different colors. And there are also people who are allergic to wool. So it's a version for them. If you cannot work with wool because you're getting, I don't know, rashes on your hands or something like that, or sneezing or being really sick about it, then acrylic is a great uh, And I love the color. And it's funny because every time I'm getting this kind types of uh, style pack, it's like, okay, now I have, again, single color skeins to mess up with something. And about the Wonder Acrylic Yarn, I don't know, uh, this uh, because it's false, it's uh, a bit complicated to get it in Europe, but uh, it's not impossible, but it's complicated because of the shipping cost and, um, and because of the um, uh, they're getting pretty late. But it's a really nice acrylic. It's so shiny it's not like uh, other types of acrylic it's really really soft some other types of acrylics the yarn are uh, really stiff and they don't feel like nice and touching but this one it, it's not uh, with the same yarn actually I uh, I made the Rayet cardigan and it's using this this one which is a knitted cardigan and i use the same type of uh, type of yarn and i'm uh, really happy with the result i'm happy with uh, uh, the result and how it's looking after wearing it and so on so yeah i really recommend this yarn and now that we talked uh maybe i should showed you because I have another knitting project in my needles for a long long time using the same acrylic yarn that I got last year a different pack of yarn which um, had this uh, combination of colors and I started to make the panels of uh, what it wanted to be a sweater but now I'm thinking that maybe I should get a vest so I already, or I don't know how it's called. So this is the second, uh, the second panel, and maybe I had to um, make this, uh, this color blocks bigger to be able to get them into one, uh, into one uh, go, so without having to repeat the colors. But because I'm um, 
I'm pretty bad at tension or I was so I was afraid about this uh, working one stitch with one color one stitch with another that I won't be able to get my tension right so I just wanted to have less rows in this but maybe I will try to finish this because if I will make a vest I don't have uh, I have already one panel and the second one is almost done so it will be a good thing to finish this one as well and yeah and now we will talk about the round yolk sweater Okay, so with the round yolk sweater, I told you last week that uh, I will finish the ball uh, that I had started with the body and then I will continue and wait for you for the, this week to just uh, start with the sleeves, but I actually started another one uh, on the body and uh, yeah, now I don't want to shape the sleeves so I will just go with the uh, balloon bell whatever sleeves so I don't want to make any decreases around the sleeve but this is my personal choice but I will show you how to calculate the decreases and how to make the decrease pattern in case you want it so for this you will need to take some measurements or um, look into the uh, standard measurements charts for this the bad thing at least in uh, in uh, yarn console i don't think that you have the wrist circumference because this is something that you will need if you are working on uh, standard measurements but uh, you can find them in different other uh, other parts if you want so what measurements we will need we will have the number of stitches that we had here on the circumference of the of our upper arm so we will go from there and then we will need the wrist okay here i will show you in the video so how um small you want your cuff to be or the sweater the sleeve to be at your wrist and then you need to measure the length but of course that you need to measure the length from where your sweater is right now usually this is an armpit length which you can find it um, in the measurement charts so if you're looking or working the sweater for someone else and you want to um, know how long to make the sleeve then you simply look in the chart see the um, upper arm length or I don't know how it can be called if you're doing it for yourself of course that you need to try it on the sweater I won't put it on me and then just measure the length of the sleeve that you will wish you should consider a cuff a ribbing or something because you don't need to take this that in account because we want to do the decreases on the ribbing we will do them only on the length of the sweater and of course another method is to just place this over your sweater that you want to use as uh, measurements and then see uh, the length of um, of this uh, the length that you will need for the sleeve okay so this is a method on how you can um, uh, calculate and measure the sleeve if you don't want to measure your arm I have a crocheted sweater here that I'm using as a sample but you don't have to do that you can be it can be a different type of sweater a both one it doesn't matter so what I do is just laying down the my work over the sweater and then measuring the sleeve and this one has a cuff so you don't have to count the cuff when calculating the stitches because you won't decrease on that part so we are only calculating and seeing trying to get rid of all of this okay so i have 
let's just say 33 centimeters for the sleeve okay and then this also has uh, a not um, shaved a sleeve so this is not relevant for me i cannot measure the wrist because uh it's not shaped so if you use another sweater that it has a shaved sleeve then you can use that and measure that section as well but i will measure so i have 37 and i will measure my wrist like this this time so i think i will want to go i don't want to go too small okay so i will go for 20 because i will also have the ribbing which my uh, get the uh, wrist the cuff will be smaller okay so i will go for 20 centimeters over here but you can go for 18 if you like it or something like that but just let it with 20 and if it's something in um, the last row or the last few rounds you can just try the sweater and if you feel that you need more or less stitches to decrease more then you can make some more decreases you can decrease even if rather two stitches one decrease 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 until you get the right uh measurement so i will go for 20 okay and now let's go back to so i have 33 centimeter for the length and 20 for the cuff okay and now let's see i'm going to the laptop to the spreadsheet and uh, show you how to calculate the decrease pattern okay so now we will calculate i hope you can see everything well uh now we will calculate the decrease pattern for the sleeve and i have the same spreadsheet that i use for the entire uh, round york uh, sweater cha sweater challenge so now we will need to calculate and i will put the centimeters here because here we have only stitches so i will put here the wrist I hope I write it correctly which I said that it will be 20 centimeters and sleeve length which I said it will be 33 centimeters and now I have to I don't know you can just instruction yolk this was the yolk section let's put it over here and now let's put it a sleeve section. Okay, so I have, I will count first the number of, so, or um, let's just say upper arm. And for the upper arm, I have the number of stitches that I have right now after finishing the first round of the sleeve. So I have, um, let me check So I have 50 stitches around. I don't know why I didn't count it before. So I have 50 stitches. And now we need to calculate for the wrist. So for the wrist, we will need, so we have 20 centimeters and we need to calculate it with the gauge. Okay, so we have 20 centimeters, which is my uh, wrist, multiplied by the number of stitches in my gauge, which is 14, and divided by the measurement of my gauge, which is 10 centimeters. And I will need 28 stitches for my wrist. 
and now the length sleeve length so i have 33 centimeters and i will put a formula so i need 33 multiplied by 7 which is the number of the the rows in my gauge multiplied by 7 and divided by 10 which is the measurements of my gauge such and I will need 23.1 I will let it 23 rounds to get to my length so now let's see how many stitches we need to decrease uh, so decrease stitches we will have so my upper arm stitches minus my wrist stitches and i have 22 stitches to decrease okay and i have only 23 rounds so this means that basically i will need to um, decrease at every round if i decrease only one stitch but as i sh uh, as uh, i will show you right away we will decrease with two stitches per row this means and if i'm putting here uh, decrease rows will be actually half of the number of stitches divided by two uh did you get it so we are not we need to decrease 22 stitches and if we decrease with two stitches per row this means that we will have 11 rows where we should have the make we should make the decreases and now having 11 rows we need to calculate the decrease pattern so the decrease pattern will be so i'm dividing the total number of rows for my line to the uh, number of uh, decrease rows and this will give me two okay so my pattern my decrease pattern needs to have two rows this will means that will mean that I will have one row decreasing and one row without decreasing. One row decreasing, one without, one, 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 okay? So this is the decrease pattern, which will have two rows and we will decrease at basically at every other row so we can get to the number of stitches that we need for the wrist. So now you know the pattern a decrease pattern to shape your sleeve in case you want so okay so yeah so this was it until now with this now we will work on the sweater and i will show you how we are doing the decreases and uh, for now i just need to tell you that for those rows that we work on the back so i counted here on the upper arm and counted uh, those stitches as well so when you're shaping the sleeve is not uh, that important to get to the um only in uh, in my case because i don't want a shaped sleeve so i want to have a bell sleeve or balloon sleeve or i don't know how they are called and uh, it affects me because if i won't have those uh, three rows at the begin at the back panel and those stitches that will add to my sleeve then i will continue without uh, of working on the length of the sleeve without decreasing but now uh, for me is that i need to decrease those stitches that i have in plus so i will explain you in the video um, working on the desk working on the sweater how i will do this okay so now you know how to decrease for the pot uh, the sleeves to have it shape it um you know how to get there to that perfect shape of your sleeve of course that if you're working alone you can along you can still 
uh, measure see how it fits I need more stitches I don't need and so on but if you're working for someone else then you can uh, use this uh, this method and now we will go back on the desk as well to actually start working on the sleeve I will give you a few explanation there uh, I'll show you how I make my the, the, the decreases and uh, so on okay let's see how we will do the sleeves we talked about the um, um how to make the decreases if you want to have a shape sleeve i will do a few decreases because of this um uh rows at the back that we did and because of this will add a few stitches on the sleeve then i will decrease the stitches and i will decrease them right into the first few uh, rounds but you can also um, uh, count this if you want to have a shaped uh, sleeve to count this as well so after making the first round because the first round will be um, without any decrease after making the first round we will see how many stitches we have on how many stitches we want to get in how many rounds rows and so on so now we won't need this and because i'm still i said last time that i will finish the ball of yarn that i had by actually for the body and then started with the um sleeve but actually i started another one so now for the sleeve we will just rejoin sorry my hair is everywhere it's kind of getting making part of this okay so we are rejoining uh when i'm working into this stitches over here you can go into the chain if you want but it's a bit difficult and it will be um it's just a strand of yarn so it's not that simple to go there so i'm going in between the stitches okay let's just chain one now to secure this yarn and i will start in the same way i kind of get used to that so now i will try to hide also this end so here is nothing weird we are going just and see for the front panel we still have the joining around side row yeah the splitting round so basically what i'm doing if uh, i don't want to add extra stitches and but also i don't want a hole because if you want to skip that you just need to go into the next stitch and this will create a hole over here so what i'm doing i'm just working two stitches together okay so i won't add too many stitches here and remember that this stitch over here is basically the body stitch so it's not from the sleeve this one is the first one from the sleeve so working in this one again will add a stitch so you can decrease like this not having holes or big holes but still um uh, not increasing the number of stitches that you have this is an usual uh, thing when we don't have short rows on the back we will do the same thing with the last row and for the three rows over here we will just um, work the stitches as they are because we will decrease them so now i'm going just around and let's see when we get here how we are doing the thing okay so we got to the back panel row, rows and now i will do two double crochets 
into each side row so this will add up six double crochet it's good to know this So I have four here and five and six. So we worked only three rows for the back and we still have this extra round which was in the other side as well which is the uh, separating round basically. So again I can do and this one over here if you're working here is not my sleeve stitch this is from the body okay so now again remember that we did in the other side so first into this side row I'm doing two together and then I'm going into the body round or stitch and then going into the first or the next leaf stitches. In this way, we are doing symmetrical to the other one. So now basically I had only one stitch that it was from the um, uh, from my sleeve and I have two over here. So basically this side row and making this increase a uh, decrease will add one stitch to your sleeve. I never mention about it because I don't see that is such a big problem with one stitch but anyways it's um, this is how I am doing it okay so now we will close this round And now remember that we have so we have six stitches here that we need to uh, decrease and I told you that I will decrease them at the beginning of uh, my sleeve because I don't want to shape it I just want to have like a bell sleeve for my sweater but if you want to shape it you just need to count the number of stitches that you have here like I explained you before with the measurements then you know the number of stitches uh, for the wrist on which you want to get and you have the total number of uh, rounds that you want to work for the length of the sleeve and then you need to divide the number of stitches that you need to decrease to the number of rounds to see uh, the decrease pattern okay so how we are doing the decreases i'm always letting the first stitch was it which is which can be the chain three the chain two when the double crochet whatever you want uh, to use as a first stitch so this one always remain the same and then I decrease into the next two stitches and then at the end of the row the last two stitches I will decrease them And this means that I'm decreasing with two stitches per row. You need to consider that when you calculate the number of stitches that you need to decrease or the number of uh, decrease uh, rounds because you can say it like so. Okay, so now I will continue until the end of the round. And at the end of the round, I will decrease again. So now I have four more stitches to decrease, or depending on how much many you have. And you can go with one round in between if you want and continue like so. Uh, here as you can see I have a small 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 gap here this is um, you can do the both stitches this together and then the other two or play around I don't mind if there is are a bit 
like gaps this is crochet it's not like you need to have it perfectly okay so now we will continue to um, decrease I will continue to decrease with the number of stitches that I want to get rid of which are the six stitches that I have in plus from the um, rows that I work at the back but as I explained before if you want to uh, shave the sleeve and have end up with different stitches than the one that you started then you know right now how to do this and you can you need to stick to that pattern so this is what I wanted to show you this time so let's talk a bit more about it and um, we'll see what other things we need to discuss about this okay so this was it with the run york sweater challenge for this week i'm still not getting too many questions about it but yeah i think uh there are so many things i'm going and of course that if you had some other things to try on but i do have comments and uh, positive feedback about it uh and uh yeah i will keep doing this uh, type of videos it doesn't matter what and uh, now you're approaching with the end because there are not there are no other things to explain about the round york sweater uh we will continue with this weekly journals but um and i will show you the progress of my uh, round york sweater of course in the meantime if you're getting started with it and you have questions you can just uh we will have the um, question form uh in the description of every video so you can use that to ask anything and uh yeah i will give you the progress and uh, starting next week uh if there will be questions i will uh, talk about and answer them and uh if not uh, i will show you my progress on the sweater i think i will go really slow from now on because uh um i do have a few patterns to write like this one like the lava sweater I wanted to say volcano but it's not volcano also i have the jokers that i think i showed you in the first uh in the first video weekly journals and i didn't write it and i wrote the pattern for for them and i need to release this pattern as well so so many things that i want to do and i have to do so maybe i will get a bit slower with the progress of the round yoke sweater uh if you have any other ideas about what to discuss or to do this type of um i don't know crochet along make along uh, i don't know it was like that but um if you have any idea we can uh, try it on and if it will work for me uh why not so i will be happy to explain more things about it i do have a suggestion to just uh, um came up with some videos about knitting and about um, beginners so how to start knitting and so on but uh yeah i think there are so many up there and i uh, because myself i'm not an experienced knitter i know how to knit i know i can understand a few uh things about knitting because uh crochet designing is helping i just try to figure out how uh the things will look or what i need but and uh, doing this research about different types of decreasing increasing and so on i found so many things so um yeah i will uh, keep thinking about it because uh, I don't want to overload this internet with an information that it's already there there is no point for it uh, I know that everybody is doing it in a different way but um, yeah if there are some great tutorials about it I I don't know I'm still thinking but of course if you will ask for it if this is something that you um, want for me to do maybe i will start doing this but it's still i'm so so one because i don't feel 
being a good teacher in meeting because I have so many things to still learning and uh, second because there are so many people that are already good at it but I have an opinion about myself that I'm not a good teacher <laughs> at all and uh, after doing this videos I got um, a great positive uh, feedback about uh, my teaching skills and so on so maybe I am or maybe I didn't knew about it because I never uh, tried to teach something or doing something like that so yeah waiting for your opinion about it if you want to do some other stuff in the next uh, videos i don't know to learn something else maybe we can do some uh, we can start uh because now the round of challenges are basically done we know how to do the sleeves we know everything we have all the information we just need to work on it then we can start talking about something else so yeah i think this was it otherwise there will be really short discussion on these weekly journals because i don't know how many things i will be able to finish or start or showing to you but i'm sure that i will find some tips to just uh, give it to you with every weekly journal so don't worry about that okay so i think this was it i uh I'm starting to think about summer already. I think I have quite a few projects to just publish next uh, in the next period and I don't want to be uh, loaded with too many projects at a time because I think it's easier uh, for you as well to choose to pick up, to have time for everything and this will allow me to have a bit of time. So I'm thinking about summer and trying to do my research about what I, I know it won't work because planning is not my thing but at least some ideas that I will want to put on paper. So if you have any suggestions about what you will want to see for summer, it's too early, right? Not even the winter started. Okay. Forget about it. <laughs> okay. Yes. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I still have some time for for winter which didn't gain it so okay so thank you so much for being here again with me I will uh, be here every week if I manage to do it with my daughter in vacation in the autumn break then this is a thing so I think I will be able to do it every week especially because I'm uh, filming on Tuesday when I'm home alone so perfect okay so this was it for this week i hope you learned some things in this uh, videos i hope you enjoy i managed to show you something finished that i finished um progress i do have the same old stuff which i didn't manage to finish but uh, i want to start a jacket uh, maybe this week but i still have uh, one project to work for uh, the yarn brand so maybe i won't have time this uh, end of the week but i do want to start a jacket maybe next week i can show you something i will do some sketches or something to show you my idea and see what you think about it okay so have a nice great weekend have a nice great next week and uh, we meet on here on next saturday bye